Okay, we have here to another interesting integral from the UNSW integration B 2020. This was problem 15. We have the integral from zero to three pi over two, arc sine of sine of x dx. Okay, now the interesting thing here is this could be so easy because when you look at this, because you look at this with the function inside the inverse, and it's tempting to just say this is x, and that's true within some values, but the only problem is the bounds. Our bounds go all the way up to three pi over two. And the tricky thing about that is, if we look, we look at the range for arc sine, it just goes from minus pi over two to pi over two. And so the trouble with three pi over two is it's outside of this range. I think maybe the best way for me to explain this and to visualize this is with the unit circle and looking at a couple of examples. Okay, looking at this circle that I've drawn over here to the right, we'll just notice that over here we have our quadrants one and four. And for these, we can draw our range here from minus pi over two to pi over two, right along the outside here. And now for our x value, if we choose any of these values over here on the right side, between minus pi over two and pi over two, we're just gonna get back x. So let's just see how that works. Let's try a point like somewhere, let's say like pi over three. So if I just look at, we'll look at arc sine of sine of pi over three, where this pi over three is gonna be our x value. Well then, sine of pi over three, that's gonna be square root of three over two. But then if we evaluate arc sine for square root of three over two, we just get back pi over three. So we show for this value anyway, when we plug in x, we just get back x. But now let's go over here on the left side and let's look at a different point like two pi over three. So we'll do the same exact thing. We're looking at arc sine, and now our x value here is gonna be two pi over three. Well then, looking at our sine value, what happens to our sine value at two pi over three? Well, that's still gonna be square root of three over two. But then taking the arc sine of square root of three over two, we don't get back two pi over three, we get back pi over three. So what happened, we input our x, but we don't get back our x, we get back something else. And as it turns out, this is gonna be the case for this whole, everything going on over here in quadrants two and quadrants three. And what you'll notice for everything in quadrants two and three, what you're getting back, it's not x, it's actually gonna be pi minus x. If you look at a graph, you can see how this works. Like for our quadrants one and four, when we have x, just notice that the minus sign in front of the x is changing the slope of this. And if you play around with some values, or you look at a graph, you'll see how this works, but we can actually use pi minus x for anything over here in quadrants two and three. So getting back to our graph, what we really need to do is split it into these two cases, like the blue case and the red case, and we have this break at pi over two. So what I'll do is, for my first integral, we'll write this, we'll have this going from zero to pi over two. And we found in that area from zero to pi over two, arc sine of sine x is just x over there. But then we just need to cover the rest of this integral. So what we can do now is integrate from pi over two all the way to the end, which is three pi over two. But like we found here for that region, arc sine of sine of x is just gonna be pi minus x. So I'll write that in here and we can integrate that. But then from here, integrating this is gonna be pretty straightforward. So first we're just integrating x, and so we're gonna have x squared from zero to pi over two. And then here, integrating this, integral of pi is gonna be just pi x. And then here it's gonna be minus x squared over two. And we just need to evaluate this from pi over two to three pi over two. Then evaluating this, the zero is nothing, so this is gonna give me pi squared over four for the first piece. Then here we'll plug in three pi over two, so that's gonna give me three pi squared over two. Then squaring three pi over two, that's gonna give me nine pi squared over four divided by two. So we're gonna have nine pi squared over eight. And then evaluating a pi over two, that's gonna give me pi squared over two here. Then we'll have our minus sign, then plugging in pi over two squared is gonna give me pi squared over four divided by two is pi squared over eight. Sorry, I messed this up. So the integral of x is actually x squared over two. And so if I divide by two here, this is actually gonna become pi squared over eight here. So from here, I'm just gonna get a common denominator. I'm gonna put everything over eight for my common denominator. So we're gonna have pi squared. This one multiplying by four is gonna become 12 pi squared. This one's just gonna be minus nine pi squared. This one's gonna be minus four pi squared. And this one's gonna become minus times minus is plus pi squared. But then you notice everything here is just gonna cancel out and we're left with our final answer of just pi squared over eight. Okay, I thought it was a good problem, just something to look out for that you can't always just assume that arc sine of sine x is gonna be x. Thanks everyone for watching, have a good day.